Hello there, Internet. How's it going, everyone? Uh, fun news. Um, at the time at the time of recording this, this past weekend, I breached 100 subscribers. So thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my channel. It may not seem like a lot, but given that I don't actually really promote this channel and only two, one or two of those subscribers are people that I know, that means that the overwhelming majority of that was just organic growth. So Thank you so much for everyone who subscribed. If you like what I am doing, please continue to, um, you know, watch the videos. Uh, and if you buy the videos, make sure that you use the use the link. Um, anyways, uh, on to the uh, next Unity Asset Store review. So uh, today we are going to be looking at the QA Office and Security Room um, by, uh, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to pronounce this, uh, so it's either QA TMO, QA TMO, or Quatmo, maybe. It's spelled literally uppercase Q, uppercase A, lowercase T M O. So your guess is as good as mine on that one. Um, uh, I apologize to the developers that I, I I'm not sure how to actually pronounce that. So, anyways, onward. Uh, so at the time of recording this, this uh, asset retails for 65 USD um, uh, and it only supports built-in and URP. Um, it does not support HDRP, the HDRP rendering pipeline. So let's go through the um, rating overviews. So on quality, it gets a pass. It, it is definitely good quality in, in my opinion. Um, uh, modularity and workability. So um, I do think the way that they modularize this is very smart. Um, I like the overwhelming majority of it. The one thing that I would have liked to see, and I'll talk about this in the asset manifest scene, um, but I would have liked to have seen uh, like the cabinets and filing cabinets and stuff like that have, um, have uh, uh, like drawers that can pull out, you know, um, and it doesn't, unfortunately. So that's one thing that I would have liked to have seen that just does not happen. But aside from that, I, I, I think that the modularity and workability does pass. I think that um, the developer of this did a really smart job of uh, where to separate like prefabs to make them, um, you know, functionally modular. So good job on that. That definitely gets a pass. Support and serviceability, uh, it seems like they respond. Um, I haven't had any problems with that, so I'm gonna pass them on that. And value. Uh, for 65 bucks, I, I, I do think that this is worth it. Um, you know, the couple of like minor gripes that I have aside, um, which I, you know, like like the filing cabinet thing, and I'll, I'll talk about a couple other things in, in the you know demo scene and in the asset manifest scene, but, all in all, I mean, those are real, like the gripes, quote unquote, that I have um, are incredibly minor. I, I, I think that it's a very good asset and that um, it is very much worth uh, the 65 bucks that um, that it costs. And if you can get it on sale, even better. But yeah, I, I do think that it is worth 65 bucks. Um, this is something that I, I can see myself using and at the very least in jams, if not in full 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 blown production so uh there it is um i think that it is um definitely worthwhile it passes in all four of my criteria and um yeah we're gonna hop into now the um the demo scene and then after the demo scene we will go into the asset manifest scene so again thank you everyone for 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 those of you who subscribed um it you know i appreciate it for sure it it means a lot that you know, people seem to be liking the way that I'm doing this. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully let's go for 200 and 300, you know. So uh, again, thank you so much, everyone. And I will see everybody over in the demo scene shortly. All righty. And we are back in the demo scene. So uh, just like always, I just dragged and dropped my character controller in, uh, the, my preferred character controller and push play. There are a couple of wonky nuances uh, to this asset that I don't think are necessarily an asset problem uh, overall, but they're more of just a um, a uh, a um, 
like the demo scene problem. Uh, so all of the doors have colliders on them that are trigger colliders. And I, when I went through and removed some of the colliders, it got a little like, well, we'll see if it happens. But I there every now and then if I hit that trigger collider uh, just right or if I hit where the trigger collider was just right, then it will make me fall through the floor. So if it happens, I apologize and I'll rectify that in post editing. But um, that is something to be aware of. Uh, so there are a number of bathroom solutions or, you know, bathroom set pieces that allow you to build out a number of different bathrooms. Um, and we'll take a look at a few of those in this demo scene in a little bit. The elevator um, is a separate prefab from the elevator shaft. So I like to see that. Oh, and there it is. I just, just fell through. So <laughs> I'm not entirely certain why, why that's happening. Um, shouldn't be, there's no real reason for it to be, but uh, whatever. Uh, like I said, I don't think that's a problem with the actual asset. I think that's just the demo scene and you know me not um, me not going through and uh, maybe I missed something uh, when I was removing stuff. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Anyways, so here's another bathroom. Uh, so they're just using the same assets to build different size bathrooms, which is nice. Those were modularized in a really smart way. Um, reception desk is nice. Is a nice uh, a prefab in my opinion. Uh, the scaling on these, if you watch my complete city pack you'll remember that I had some critiques about these um, or about, you know, chairs and desks being incorrectly scaled. These are all scaled correctly. So good job on the developer for that. It's all just scaled correctly out of the box. Um, different desk options, different, like there's lots of clutter in this level. So here's another bathroom. You can't really see this one that well, but that is another small single seater bathroom. So again, the ability to just build a lot of different, um, a lot of different bathrooms out of this is really, really nice. Um, the ability to build boardrooms and stuff like that, just again, very, very intelligently uh, modularized. Um, obviously that is something I always test and that works right out of the box. Uh, Tables, stuff like that. Um, there is a film grain you'll notice on here. That's also an artifact of the asset itself. So um, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. That's not, or sorry, not, not the asset itself, rather the demo scene itself, not, not the asset is what I meant to say. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Just when you're using the individual prefabs, um, you shouldn't have a problem with that. So this is a short demo scene. Um, that's it for the demo scene. There's really nothing up here. This just leads to a to an empty there. <laughs> so that's the end of the demo scene. Um, we are going to take a look at the uh, asset manifest scene next, and I will see everyone there. Alrighty, and we are back in the asset manifest scene. So we're going to start with the big stuff first, and then we'll go into the small stuff. So here you've got your chunked out uh, stairwells, uh, your chunked out grand stairwell and walls. There are, I do think the way that they, that they did these walls is very smart. Um, so for things where you need to show the edge of a wall, you've got this piece. Uh, and then for the ones where you're literally just building uh, the interiors, you've got these ones. So I actually think that that's a smart way to do it. Um, because for something like this, you're probably not going to be like, you're probably going to be doing this as an interior or using it for interior building, not necessarily as an exterior building. A few different pillar solutions, which is nice to see of different shapes and sizes, uh, rug floors. <clears throat> and then you've got archways and stuff like that. And these are also single faced. Then you've got uh, a few different door well options. They're single faced. Um, and then more angle, more angle pieces. So building out uh, again, like, like protruding walls. So that's it for the big chunks. I do think that this is enough to actually build, um, excuse me, to build quality um, uh, level interiors. So 
yeah. Uh, so then you've got a few different blind options. So the window blinds of different sizes, you've got windows of different sizes. Um, you've got a few different door solutions. There's that clatter, trigger clatter I was talking about. I can actually do this. Um, so again, more windows, more windows, more doors, more doors, lots of doors actually. Um, let's go back here. So you've got your stalls, your actual bathroom stalls. Um, I forget what this piece is. I think it's supposed to be like a baseboard or something or, you know, but uh, a couple of different stands, um, more like, you know, stuff. And with these, let's see if I can actually do this. So these are all, you can just remove those and configure those however you want. Few different book stand solutions. Um, these are unfortunately not, if memory serves. Uh, where is it here? Do not believe. Yeah. So unfortunately, these cabinets do not have interiors, except for you can remove the glass. Um, in fact, I think most of the cabinets do not have interiors. But there are ways to fake that from a um, from a. Uh, uh, programmatic standpoint as well. So you can just have, you can create essentially a scriptable object to have it be a container. Um, so here's where, so this reception desk, I think, was um, uh, modularized out in a really smart way. So you can make the small one like you saw in the, in the um, beginning of the demo scene, or you can add middle pieces to it. You can make it curvy in different shapes. I think this was a really, really smart way to modularize this out. I think that's kind of a really cool, really cool asset on that end. Uh, you've got a mirror. Um, so then we're getting into, uh, yeah, let's go down the other way. So you have a bunch of different chair solutions, um, couch solutions, a few different, you know, garbage, pin, garbage pails. Um, so you've got all these bathroom uh uh, things, um, all these bathroom set pieces. So you can really build out some cool bathroom um, bathroom offerings like you saw in that demo scene. So all the books, oh, and then you've got your male and female um, signs. I zoomed in on one of those, I believe, in the uh, demo scene. So you've got all the books individually, and then you've got them chunked. I really like to see this. I think this is a very smart way to do that. And it allows you to really add like life to your to your level. Um, so you've got desks and desk components, so you can build out your own um, sort of multi-piece uh, desks. Um, so a lot of those, uh, a lot of different wall clutter, so paintings and stuff like that. I also really like to see that. Um, I think. So a few different table solutions, water coolers, uh, if you see it there, cup. I think these are also, yeah, these also do not have interiors. A um, couple of different TVs. You have a wall mounted and a standing TV, necessity for offices, and for that matter, security um, uh, observation rooms. So you've got the actual security panels. Um, you have a number of different computer parts and pieces um more more desk stuff uh so then you've got a few different you know you gotta have coffee and donuts for offices right um lots of little office clutter which i really like to see vases and stuff like that so more clutter again i love to see clutter in levels if you've watched my previous videos then you are well aware of that um more computer stuff. So we've got your Apple fan base covered and you have your PC fan base covered. Uh, and then we're going into uh, more kind of generalized clutter and stuff like that. So a um, few different pot of plants. I like to see that. Um, the piping is something that's overlooked a lot of the time when you have more industrial type assets. So that's really nice to see. A couple different security camera options like to see that, a couple different fire hose options. Um, uh, here's the security hat, because you know, a uh, few different flashlights uh, for the security room, and then you've got actual lighting panels as well. 
Uh, you've got grates, which I believe, yeah, those do have interiors, but I don't think, yeah, you would have to hack it up with like a mesh um, editor or something to get those off of there, but if you wanted to do something, but even there, you can, you can fake like hiding stuff in vents. You couldn't hide yourself in a vent with that particular asset, but you could fake hiding things in there with, you know, slapping like a scriptable inventory, scriptable object for inventory or something on it. Um, oh, let's see. So I don't think, yeah, these also do not have interiors. Um, so that would have been nice to see, but it is what it is. Shelving units. Uh, so these we saw in the um, security office. It's nice to see those being empty because then you can populate them however you want. There are boxes here that do have, um, you know, interiors. So you can you you can do stuff with that. That's nice to see. Uh, soda machine because we all need soda machines in offices. You know, late stage capitalism and all that fun stuff. Um, what are those? Oh, paper. All right. So those are specifically for sticking into like the into like this or this or something like that. Lots of different markers and sharpies and stuff like that. And then you've got these little. Um, so usually in like like a, a stock brokerage place, uh, you know, a stock brokerage brokerage office, uh, you'll see you'll have different time zones that are up on the wall. So that's what that would you know, be used for essentially. Um, uh, more papers, so more clutter. Again, you know how much I love my clutter. A couple of different printing solutions or, you know, printer solutions. Uh, here's that elevator that I was talking about. Um, so it is independent um, from the actual shaft, um, which you would make the shaft with... Uh, forget which asset piece um, but anyways that's there for that uh, and then a couple of different boards <laughs> I mean those would be more bolos than wanted but you know and post-it notes gotta have lots of post-it notes in fact can you read those eh, call mom that's funny uh, and then you've got the actual divider tape and electrical um, electrical equipment piece so I do think that I mean, I, I think there's some room for improvement on some of this stuff. Like, I'd like to see interiors with this. Um, I would like to maybe see with the elevator. Um, I'd like to maybe see, uh, you know, um, what's it called? Like, the 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 things that are on top of the elevator. My God, I'm having a complete brain fart. The cables and stuff like that. Because then you could actually make like functional elevator shafts and stuff. But um, I don't know. I mean, I think that like all things considered, this is a really good pack. Just know what its limitations are, you know, with the, these things like the drawers not being able to be pulled out and stuff like those being static meshes. I think if you go into it understanding that, um, then I think that this is probably a worthwhile pack. It's not a bad pack at all. So uh, hope you guys like that one. I hope you guys are enjoying the maybe kind of new format that I'm trying with um, the breakdown and everything. Um, and I will probably keep doing that because I think it just before I was doing them all on their own or sorry, I was doing them all as one shot. But now I'm doing the review. I'm doing that first part of the video. I record that last because um, sometimes when I'm testing it, I'll miss stuff that uh when i'm running like recording software i won't catch so um or then if i'm not running recording software rather i won't catch so anyways i hope you guys are enjoying this new format i hope you guys are liking the videos um if you have any comments let me know and i will see everybody in the next one